I'm Steve Major. I'm the district fisheries biologist on the South Coast District for ODFW. Uh, today I'm down here on one of our southwest rivers uh, that has a really good population of uh, wild steelhead. Uh, fishing conditions are a little high today, but uh, um, we're going to try our luck and uh, hopefully we'll catch a fish today. South Coast, as you know, we get a lot of we get a lot of rain, um, and also we have long periods of dry periods where we have clear conditions where steelhead are pretty spooky. They're sneaky fish; they hide in deep water. But right now, as you can see, we just had some pretty good rain over the weekend and river conditions are, like I say, a little high, but they are starting to drop and clear. And this is the time when you want to be out here fishing steelhead on the, on the decline of flow. Uh, you got about four or five days before the, this river in particular gets really low and clear and fishing gets tough again. So this is the time, this is the time you want to be out here. In our district, uh, which runs from the California border, it's our southern lead watershed is the wind check and our northerly watershed is uh, New River Forest Creek. Uh, and that's almost toward Bandon. Uh, we do encompass the lower part of the lower road. Um, but uh, generally when you think of the south coast, you think of non-road winter, you know, stealing streams. The Chekko River is uh, one of our big, big watersheds on the south coast. Uh, it's as far as, uh, as far as winter steelhead population goes, it's a really good healthy run of wild fish. We also have a small hatchery program on that river. Um, those fish are placed in the lower Chekko River, the hatchery fish are, and they generally stay in the lower Chekko. Uh, most of the fish that we see caught, both wild and hatchery, are caught in the lower nine miles of the river. We manage the south coast for wild, wild steelhead, like any of our other, other species down here, whether it's Chinook, steelhead, cutthroat, um, or coho, they're all based off wild fisheries. Uh, we do have small, like say, small hatchery programs on some of these rivers. Uh, as far as wild steelhead go, we manage them as a one and three fishery. You can keep one wild steelhead a year, but three for the season. And uh, the way we monitor these fish is through juvenile surveys in the summertime. We end up going up into all these watersheds. Uh, most of them are in wildernesses or roadless areas, and we uh, we manage we monitor the juvenile abundance to see what, how well the uh, adult steelhead spawn every year. We have some great data and you know we've been collecting data like snorkel surveys for 17 or 18 years worth of data um, throughout the whole south coast and road watershed so there's actually a long-term data set trend trend information that we use to help manage these fisheries. Yeah. Well, we like to like to say let people have the opportunity it's a limited opportunity but an opportunity to keep wild fish I think it encourages folks to get out and see see the habitat that these fish are in um, and appreciate it. Uh, if you aren't out fishing, uh, you aren't willing to protect the habitat that they need to, uh, to, to survive. So maintaining these fisheries as a wild fisheries is important. And two, we don't have very many hatchery programs out here. So anglers that want to do, want to keep a fish once in a while and take it home and eat, um, I think it's a, I think it's a good, good point. Uh, we'll, we'll talk at it from, from a bank angling perspective, which is probably the best way to experience this type of fishery because you can get into areas where there's nobody fishing. As you can see today, uh, it's just myself and you <laughs> out here fishing and uh, you know you can get away from people so the best the number one thing is to do this bank angling I think and you have two options when you're bank angling is one you can sit out here and run uh, like a little uh, corky and a piece of yarn or a piece of yarn or a little bead and uh, and but be always on to be in contact with the ground and then the other option is when the water's a little higher on some of these rivers like this weekend when it rained is to go out and plunk on uh, plunk a spinning glow on the edge of a gravel bar with with other folks and uh, and catch these fish as they're moving up the river. You always want to go with the most effective technique and I think the most effective technique is side drifting a little corky or a little piece of bait uh, through these through these runs and then these fish if you present it properly will bite. Um, until you figure out how these fish where they live where they move where they you know um, when they're around uh, then you can start to spread out and try some new techniques and, uh, and, and see if you can catch these fish and challenge yourself. The steelhead runs start in mid-December on our bigger rivers like the Chekko River and the Rogue River. We tend to see pretty good numbers of fish by mid by mid-December. Uh, smaller rivers we generally don't see a lot of fish around until you know the first week or two of January. Uh, most of the fish are done spawning or we see a lot of spawned out fish by mid-March. So you want to you know, your peak time is January, February to be down here and, and fishing these rivers if you want some fresh fish.